Yeah, just started DJing really at like 11. Just, and then wanted to take it to the next level of like, there weren't enough stuff what I wanted, and it wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. So I thought I'd just start making some stuff just pretty dark. So how long did it take you to get to a point where you made something where you felt it was kind of good enough to show someone or... or after, about someone? A, after about a year, about 11 months to a year. Because mm -hmm. it, it wasn't the greatest production, but it was different. It was sort of... It was what Hatcher wanted, really. Mm -hmm. So... So, like you say, you spent a year kind of getting into it. Like, how, how much time would you be spending making music? A lot of the time. Homework time. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting on the computer, just... Just sort of basically it was copying what LB and well, I was trying to copy what LB, Z Biases were doing. But obviously they had like 10 grand studios <laughs> and I had a free cracked plug, uh, cracked software. So it was, it was sort of through trying to copy them I sort of got my own sound and then just worked from there. There's another guy that, you're work, that you've always Benga, yeah. worked with as well. Yeah, isn't yeah. There? And you two are doing stuff to get what sort of yeah, together by the hatcher, weren't we you? We actually met playing each other tunes down the phone. Like, we had only actually seen each other face to face. Like, I met his brother, and his brother said, Oh, yeah, his mate wants to be a producer, and whatnot. Then we started playing each other tracks and then become like pretty good friends mm -hmm. and had our first release together. Mm -hmm. I think there's something quite interesting about this because at this point, you two are making records <sighs> basically for Hatcher, aren't yeah. you? So he can have them yeah, yeah. exclusive. No one else had them. Mm-hmm. It's a really Jamaican way of doing things, isn't it? Were you sort of aware of that, or, no. or was it just this is just how it works? That's just how it was. It was just he was stubborn, really, and didn't want us to give it to anyone else. So how, how would that work? Would he be just kind of like saying to you, right, if you give me a tune, I'll well, we play was, it, but you we, can't give it to anyone we else? We was writing, like, ridiculous amount of tunes. We was doing, like, 30, 40 tracks a week. Mm. And just he'd, we'd take them down to him, and whatever he'd play would sort of get heard. Mm. So you're, like, 30, 40 a week for the last, you know, five years? No, no, it's toned down a bit. It's toned down. It toned down when I got into sort of mixing down. I wasn't really bothered, I didn't really know nothing about engineering or nothing. When I started, I didn't even, weren't even aware of like EQs or nothing. So it was just, just the whole time just changing bass sounds and like twisting the bass and changing drums sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's a load of stuff that's really parallel to the way things have worked in Jamaica before, aren't there? That exclusivity, yeah, yeah, dubs, yeah. dubs, dubs, sound systems, yeah. the bass. Um, I've only just started realising that sort of stuff over the past year, mm. year and after really. Why do you think that is? Digital Mystics had a lot to do with it. They sort of come with this earthy, raw, heavily reggae-influenced sound. And it was, I think they ended up making, I think the whole sound system thing in dubstep is, it was always at Plastic People, and Plastic People, like in London, it's quite a respected club, it's got a good sound system. So he was just used to hearing it on a good sound system, so we can't really hear it nowhere else. So just, that, you just mentioned Radio One. Yeah. For people that don't know, what happened in January? There was the dubstep was, it was basically Marianne Hobbs, who's always had a sort of new music show, she decided to have uh, two hours just dedicated to dubstep, which no one ever had. And this is on Radio, Radio One, One, which is the, BBC. the national pop music yeah. station, yeah. isn't it? And it was just crazy. Like the vibe <laughs> in the studio was everyone was just smiling, everyone was on such a good one, everyone was drinking, everyone was doing whatever. It was just, it was, it was surreal. Like, we were all running about the Radio 1 studio. Like, Zane Lowe, who's, like, a pretty big DJ, was, like, just walking past us, and it's, like... It, it still seems surreal now. I listen back to the, to the whole show, and I still get the tingles up, like, up my spine. It's, it's mad, because since then, it's, it's just gone old, what's just gone up. I mean, you said, like, you know, we're all in the studio, blah, 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 blah. Like, who was there? What was uh, happening? It was me, Digital Mystics... Uh, Vexed, Distance, Hatcher, Code Nine, and Space Ape, and so the All Stars, basically. Yeah, just the, the Magnificent Seven, as a, as our court sense called us. But yeah, it was it was mad. It was really really surreal, and it's I I never feel I don't think I'll ever feel the feeling that everyone felt that night ever again mm -hmm. because it was sort of the emails and stuff that were coming in. It was like not we've done it. It was like we've finally got the point across of. You can make what you want to make and get away with it. You haven't got to be forced into making commercial house or commercial whatever that you can take something from the underground up. I, guess. Mm. I mean, the other really interesting thing about the whole scene is how, like, if, if you, if you um, were to look at the spectrum of different people that are in the scene, yeah, it's not like just something one, between you yeah. and it, Burial, for yeah, example. it's totally different. Like, unbelievably different. It's, it's contrast. <laughs> it's not, I think that's what people like, because it's not... 
it's all dubstep, but there's so much variety. You've got sort of Vexed and Distance, who makes sort of more drum and bass influence. You've got Burial, who I'm not sure what he's inspired by, but he's heavy. Like, it's pretty, pretty mad production. You've got Code Nine, who's really sort of laid back, chilled out sort of production. You've got Digital Mystics, well, between three of them, they've got sort of it all covered. You've got Lofo, who's more beats based. You've got Mallory, who's pure spiritual. And then you've got Koki, who's just ill. Koki, who's just yeah. ill. Koki, who's just mm-hmm. ill. Like every track you listen to by Koki, it's just like, like you just the bass just takes you away. Mm. 